Chapter One The Mermaid Every evening the fisherman went out fishing. He sometimes sold his fish at the market. Sometimes he did not catch many fish, and he could not sell them. One evening his net was very heavy. He laughed and said, <laughs> Did I catch all the fish in the sea? Or did I catch some horrible monster? I will give it to the Queen. She will be happy. He pulled and pulled the heavy net. Finally, he pulled the net next to the boat. But there were no fish in it, and there was no monster. There was only a little mermaid. She was asleep. Her hair was yellow like gold. Her body was white like ivory. Her tail like silver and pearl, and her ears like seashells. She was very beautiful. The fisherman pulled the net closer to the boat. He embraced her. When he touched her, she screamed. She could not escape, so she began to cry and said, Please let me go. I am the only daughter of a king of the sea. My father is very old and alone. But the fisherman answered her, I will let you go, but you must make me a promise. I will call you and you will come and sing to me. The fish love the songs of the people of the sea. You will sing, and my nets will be full. I promise. Please let me go, cried the mermaid. Yes, I will let you go, said the fisherman. So she promised him, and he let her go. She went back into the sea, and trembled. She felt a strange fear. Every evening the young fisherman went fishing and called the mermaid. She came and sang to him. The dolphins swam round and round her. The seagulls were in the sky above her head. She sang a marvellous song of the tritons, the men with long green beards. She sang of the gardens of the sea with their corals. Here the fish swim like silver birds. She sang of the big whales from the cold north seas, and of the dead sailors in their ships at the bottom of the sea. She sang of the little children. They ride on the backs of the dolphins and laugh. When she sang, the tuna fish came to listen to her. The young fisherman then caught many of them. When his boat was full of fish, the mermaid smiled at him and swam away. But she never came near him. When he tried to catch her, she went into the water like a seal. Each day her voice became sweeter to his ears. Soon he forgot his nets and listened to her song. He listened to her until the moon came. One evening he called her and said, Little mermaid, marry me, because I love you. But the little mermaid said, You have a human soul. Send away your soul, and then I can love you. The young fisherman thought, Why do I need my soul? I cannot see it. I cannot touch it. I do not know it. Of course, I will send it away, and I will be very happy. He stood up in his boat and cried, I will send my soul away. You will be my wife, and you will show me all the things you sing about. We will be together forever. The little mermaid laughed because she was very happy. 
But how can I send my soul away? cried the young fisherman. I do not know, said the little mermaid. The people of the sea have no souls. Early the next morning, the fisherman went to the priest's house and knocked on his door. The priest looked out of the window and saw the fisherman and said, Come in. The young fisherman entered and cried to the priest, Father, I am in love with a mermaid. I cannot marry her because I have a soul. How can I send my soul away? I really do not need it. Why is my soul important? I cannot see it. I cannot touch it. I do not know it. The priest answered, Are you mad? God gave you your soul. It is very precious. It is as precious as all the gold in the world. So, my son, do not think about this any more. It is the worst sin. The people of the sea are lost creatures. They are like the beasts of the field. They do not know what is right and wrong. God didn't die for them. The young fisherman began to cry and said, <laughs> Father, the fawns live in the forest and are happy. The mermen sit on the rocks with their gold harps. I want to be like them. Why is my soul important? I have a soul, but I cannot have the mermaid. And I love her, he cried. It is hard. Horrible to love your body, cried the priest. The fawns of the woods and the mermen are horrible. I hear them at night. They try to distract me from my prayers. They are lost, I tell you. They are lost. There is no heaven or hell for them. Away, away, cried the priest. Your mermaid is lost and you will be lost with her. The young fisherman walked sadly to the marketplace. When the merchants saw him, they said, What, what do you, do you want, want to, sell? to sell? I will sell you my soul, he answered. Please buy it from me, because I am tired of it. What can I do with a soul? I cannot see it. I cannot touch it. I do not know it. But the merchants laughed at him and said, <laughs> <laughs> What can we do with a soul? A false coin is more precious. Sell us your body, and we will give you a lot of gold. But we will not give you any money for your soul. The young fisherman thought, How strange this is. The priest said, Your soul is as precious as all the gold in the world. But the merchants say, a false coin is more precious. He went to the beach and began to think. Chapter 2 The Witch At midday he remembered that there was a young witch. She lived in a cave and she was very good at magic. He ran quickly to her. What do you need? What do you need? She cried when he ran towards her cave. Do you need fish when the weather is bad? I have a special instrument. You play it and all the fish swim into the bay. But it has a price, pretty boy. It has a price. What do you need? What do you need? A storm to destroy the ships. Do you want the gold on the ships? I can help you. I have more storms than the wind. My master is stronger than the wind. But I have a price, pretty boy. I have a price. 
I do not want very much," said the young fisherman. "But the priest is very angry with me, and the merchants laugh at me. So, I came to you, and I will pay you any price." "What do you want?" asked the witch. "I want to send my soul away from me," answered the young fisherman. The witch's face became white. "Pretty boy, pretty boy," she said. "That is a terrible thing to do." He laughed, and answered her, <laughs> "My soul is not important to me. I cannot see it. I cannot touch it. I do not know it." I will tell you. But you must give me something," said the witch. She looked at him with her beautiful eyes. Five pieces of gold," he said, "and my nets, and my house, and my boat. But how can I send away my soul?" She laughed, and answered, "I can change the autumn leaves into gold." I can change the light of the moon into silver. My master is richer than all the kings of this world. The witch caressed his hair with her thin white hand. You must dance with me, pretty boy," she said softly, and she smiled at him. Only this," cried the young fisherman. Only this," she answered, and she smiled at him again. Then we will dance together in a secret place at sunset," he said, "and you will tell me everything. Then I can send away my soul. When the moon is full, when the moon is full," she said softly. Then she looked around and listened. Three birds sang. There was no other sound. There was only the sound of the waves. So she pulled him next to her. She put her dry lips close to his ear. Tonight you must come to the top of the mountain, she whispered. It is a special night, and he will be there. Who is he? He asked. It is not important," she answered. "Go tonight and stand under the tree, and wait for me. You will see a dog, and you must hit it with a stick. The dog will run away. Remember, do not speak to the owl. I will come with the full moon." And we will dance together. How can I send my soul away? You must promise to tell me," he said. She came out of the cave into the sun. I promise," she answered. "You are the best witch in the world," cried the fisherman, and he ran back to the town happily. The witch went into her cave. And burned a magic plant. She looked into the smoke. After some time, she said angrily, "He must be mine. I am as beautiful as she is." That evening, when the moon appeared, the fisherman went to the top of the mountain. He stood under the tree. A big owl with yellow eyes called his name. He did not answer. A black dog ran towards him. He hit it with a stick, and it ran away. At midnight, the witches were in the sky. They were like bats. Phew! <laughs> they cried when they came to the ground. There, There is someone here, here and, and we, we do, do not, not know, know him. him. Finally. The young witch with red hair appeared. She wore a gold dress with peacock's eyes on it, and her little hat was green. 
Where is he? Where is he? Asked the witches when they saw her. She laughed and ran to the fisherman. She took him by the hand, and then they danced in the moonlight. They danced round and round. Then they heard the sound of a galloping horse, but they did not see a horse. Faster, faster! She cried, and then the fisherman was afraid. Something very bad was there, and he was afraid of it. There was a man near a rock. He wore elegant Spanish clothes. This man watched the fisherman constantly. The witch laughed, and he danced with her round and round.